could have thought that laser blasts targeted at plastics could produce miniature diamonds. In a new study conducted by physicist Dominic Krauss and his German team published in Science Advances, researchers directed lasers to multiple samples of plastic or polyethylene terephthalate to do just that. This plastic is fairly pedestrian and exists in all food packaging materials, juice boxes and plastic water bottles around you. With each blast, a shock wave is bolted through the plastic, increasing its pressure and temperature to extraordinary levels. Thus, when it is squeezed to about a million times Earth's atmospheric pressure and heated to thousands of degrees Celsius, it was revealed that nanodiamonds had formed. When the laser was fired, it heated up the plastic to temperatures between 3200 degrees Celsius and 5800 degrees Celsius and the shock waves brought the plastic to pressures upward of 72 gigapascals, equal to one-fifth the pressure in Earth's core. What's interesting is that ice giant planets such as Uranus and Neptune and maybe even inside some moons such as Titan could be scattered with such diamonds. Since these bodies have similar temperatures and pressure and even similar combinations of chemical elements, it actually points to the possibility that diamonds could indeed be raining down in the interiors of those planets. But it doesn't end there. There are previous studies which have given us similar results. Some earlier studies created diamonds using the same polyethylene terephthalate that is commonly used in food and drink packaging. But those studies created diamonds by the compression of compounds of hydrogen and carbon. While PET contains hydrogen and carbon, it also possesses oxygen. That very factor makes it a good match to the composition of planets, Neptune and Uranus. According to Dominic Krauss, this is basically what happens. During the process, the oxygen in the plastic sucks out the hydrogen. This leaves behind carbon which can then form nanodiamonds. In the study, a form of water called superionic water was also obtained which conducts electricity more easily than regular water. There were basically two measurement methods employed in the study. One was X-ray diffraction to determine whether nanodiamonds were produced and the other was small angle scattering to see how quickly and how large the diamonds grew. This is how it all went down. A high-performance laser fired 10 flashes per second at a PET film which the beam illuminated at intervals of a tenth of a second. Nanodiamonds then shot out of the film and landed in a collecting tank filled with water. There, they decelerated, allowing the researchers to filter and harvest them. The researchers further suggest that this technique could actually be applied in manufacturing nanodiamonds that are already included in abrasives and polishing agents for various other purposes. Physicist Dominic Krauss says that nanodiamonds are actually commonly produced by detonating explosives. But that process is usually more challenging to control. This new technique, however, does away with that defect. This technique can create nanodiamonds that are better tailored for specific uses. One of those uses can be actually making quantum devices that are generally made using diamonds with defects. It could also provide opportunities for recycling plastic waste. For the print, this is Gorvi Narang. For more, log on to theprint.in and follow us on our social media handles.